Sorry, low to level body. I'm a Christiana, a lead AI scientist here at Pi School. And um, this is our fifth, yes, this is the fifth one, Tech Talk. And today we, we welcome uh, Alessio Miaschi, which is a postdoctoral researcher at the Italian Natural Language Processing Lab from uh, the Institute for Computational Linguistics in, um, in Pisa. Alessio will, uh, will talk today about interpretability uh, in uh, large language models and in general in natural language processing. And uh, in particular, he will focus on uh, two methods. Uh, the first one is called integrated uh, gradients. And the second one instead is the analysis of the uh, attention matrices, at least for models that are based on transformer. So uh, thank you again to everybody. And I uh, thank you again also to Alessio to be here. And the floor is yours. You can start. Okay. So <laughs> I will leave. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. First of all, let me share the screen. Okay. 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 Can you see the screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, okay. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm Alessio Miaschi. First of all, I would like to to thank you, Cristiano and, and, and Lucia, for for inviting me for this for this talk. And um, in this talk, I will talk about uh, interpretability and specifically in, in interpretability in the context of uh, uh, deep neural networks of, of models, of, of, language, uh, of language models. And this presentation is, by, is divided in two parts. In the first part, I, I will have a very brief introduction about neural language models. And then, of course, about the interpretability techniques that in the last few years have been devised in order to study the behaviors of these models. And then I will switch to a Google Colab notebook, and we will see how to, first of all, fine tune a model on a specific task. And then we will see how to use two different techniques in order to try to understand the uh, decision of this model at inference time. Okay. But, uh, okay. 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 First of all, a very brief introduction, uh, even if uh, Cristiano already introduced me. I am Alessio Miaschi. I'm a postdoc from the Italian NLP lab from the CNR in Pisa, and I have received my PhD in computer science uh, this year. I work on natural language processing and especially in interpretability and, and trying to understand the inner mechanism and the inner behavior of these uh, uh, models, and also in the development of natural language processing tools uh, uh, in the context of the, the development of educational application. I am a member of the Italian NLP Lab, and we are a group of researchers, postdocs, uh, students uh, from computational linguistics, uh, but also computer science and linguistics. And we work on uh, developing resources and also algorithms and models uh, uh, for processing and understanding human language. And as you can see here, I left the, the link of our website. So feel free to uh, look at our website, uh, uh, see all our activities and our um main projects okay here i left the links uh, for this presentation so here i have the links for the the slides i okay first of all one second i will copy here in the chat first of all here the link of this presentation and then the link of the google collab so you can look at the uh, the slides and also the collab notebook during my presentation, but also after the presentation, you you can uh, look at the, the the experiments that uh, I wrote in the in the collab notebook in order to reproduce the, the experiments. And uh, I will start with a very brief introduction about interpretability and uh, first of all about neural language models. Uh, uh, even if I assume that um, the majority of you already knows about neural language models and deep neural networks and models of language. But of course, if you have any questions and any doubts, you can um, uh, ask me all of your questions. Okay, we are in the context of NLP. 
and we know that uh, this field has seen an unprecedented progress in the last few years uh, and much of this progress is due to the replacement of the traditional machine learning systems to more powerful deep learning models okay so we moved to a so-called classical nlp pipeline in which we have a very long pre-processing phase and also we have a a feature extraction process in which we need to define and extract the linguistic features that can be used for a, a, a classifier, for instance, a vector machine or a sub vector regressor. And now we move to a deep learning based approach in which we simply fed um, our sentences, our documents into, into the representation of, of a deep neural networks. And we use the uh, architecture of these models in order to perform uh, several different natural language processing tasks sentiment analysis classification entity extraction and so on more specifically when we are speaking about deep neural networks models of language we are speaking about neural language models and very simply a neural language model is a neural network that is trained to approximate the so-called language modeling function so we can think about of a probabilistic language model that solves this function is try to define the probability of a sentence. So the probability of a sentence can be seen at the, as the probability of a word in an input sequence according to the previous context. And in 2003, Benjo and other colleagues proposed for the first time to use a neural network architecture to uh, predict the next word, so to solve the language modeling function using the architecture of a neural network. And so they defined the first neural probabilistic language model. From that day, a lot of improvements has, has been made in, in this context. And I assume that all of you already knows that nowadays the, the, the transformer architecture has become the preferred solution in, in the development of state-of-the-art neural language models. The transformers is a, a, a neural network that uses attention and fully connected layers to create, uh, um, to in order to capture distant patterns in, uh, in an input sequence, so in, uh, in sentences and in documents. And this is done thanks to the attention that very briefly attention can be seen as a method that allows the model to attend to different position in an input sequence, in an input sentence, and compute the representation of that sentence. So when we are processing, for instance, a sentence and we are on a specific word, the attention allows to create a representation of that word that is also related to all the other surrounding words in that input sequence. So this is why these models are also called contextualized or contextual language model, because they deal with the entire um, information in a specific input sequence, input sentence. Um, we are also in the context of transfer learning. So in general, when we use these models, we have two different phases. The first one is the pre-training phase in which we expose these models to um, uh, a huge amount of, of data, for instance, old Wikipedia. And uh, we train our model to, to solve, uh, for instance, the language modeling uh, function. And, and we create a pre-trained model. Then we move to a second phase called adaptation or fine tuning phase, in which we um, take our pre trained model, we take the weights of our pre trained model, and we continue the, the training on a different objective function in order to solve a specific task. So for instance, the uh, classification task, sentiment analysis, sequence labeling, question answering, and, and, and so on. Okay, so uh, we have these two different phases. Uh, starting from a pre-trained model and using the weights of the pre-trained model to perform downstream tasks uh, and solve different kind of NLP uh, tasks. Um, I don't want to go on 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 the on this very first introductory part about neural language models. I would like to um, show you something about uh, interpretability of neural language models because, of course, we know that the uh, interpretability is one of the uh, most addressed line of uh, research in, in, in deep learning in general, because these huge models are very powerful, but at the same time, uh, we they are not very transparent about their decision, about how they solve specific uh, tasks. So we know that also the analysis of the inner workings of neural language models become one of the most addressed line uh, uh, of, of research in NLP. A lot of methods have been studied in order to obtain explanations and also try to understand how these models are able to uh, capture syntactic or semantic phenomena. And uh, 
I don't have time here to discuss all of the details, all the methodologies that have been devised in the last few years, but I left here some uh, uh, insights. These are four different techniques, and I left here the links for the papers that describe different approaches that have been devised in the last few years to interpret the decision and the inner workings of these models. For instance, we have the defining of probing tasks in order to understand the linguistic knowledge implicitly encoded by these models. We have, of course, the analysis of attention mechanisms since we are dealing with transformer models. We have the possibility to uh, explain and try to understand the decision of this model with specific uh, algorithms, such as the integrated gradients algorithm, and also the definition of specific diagnostic tests to um, test the ability of the model on very specific, uh, um, very specific linguistic task. Okay, so here you have the references at the end of the presentation. I will show you the list of the papers that um, you can un try to, to look and uh, um, see all these different kind of approaches de devised in the last few years to uh, study the inner workings of these models. Uh, now I will switch to the Google Collab. And in the Google Collab, we will first of all, we'll see, we'll see how to uh, fine-tune one of the most famous neural language model that is the BERT model even if uh, nowadays we have more uh, bigger and powerful neural language models but well the the, the process of fine-tuning and trying to understand the decision of these models is similar if we are using BERT or a more complicated and more um, uh, uh, high and more highly parameterized model so we will see how to fine-tune the BERT model on a classification task okay even if maybe you already see how to fine tune a, a model on a natural language processing task. But I need to start with this phase because with the fine tuned model, we will see first of all how to uh, interpret the decision of this model with the integrated gradients algorithm. And then in the last part of the tutorial, we will see how to visualize the attention matrices of, of this model and in order to see if we can. Uh, um, uh, understand which are, for instance, the most attended tokens, the most attended words uh, when the model is used at, uh, at inference time. Okay, so you have the, the links of the slides and of the Google Collab, so I will switch to the, to the Collab here. Maybe I will zoom a little bit. Okay, okay, so um, as I said previously, in this collab, we will first of all see how to fine tune that model on a classification task, and I choose the uh, a sentiment analysis task. And then we will see how to uh, use the Captain library in order to use the integrated gradients algorithm and also to visualize the attention matrices uh, of the fine tuned model. This notebook is adapted from uh, two tutorials uh, from the Captain library, uh, this part one and part two tutorials and also from this following notebook. So here you have the links, and if you are interested in order to, to understand and to see uh, other examples on how to use these two different algorithms, you can look at these links. Okay, so first of all, of course, we need to uh, install all the, the dependencies and the libraries and import our, our, our modules. Uh, we need the transformers, dataset, and evaluate um, libraries in order to uh, use uh, neural language model, and then we have Captum for the integrated uh, gradients algorithm uh, part. Okay, so we will install these uh, libraries. We will import here the libraries and the modules that we need, and also here yeah, okay the device uh, in order to perform the, the experiments also on GPU. If you are interested in performing experiments on a GPU, and um, then in the first part, uh, I would like to start from a pre-trained model and fine-tune this model on a specific classification task. Uh, we will use for this experiment a pre-trained version of BERT that is available with the Transformers library. Maybe all of you already knows about the Transformers library. In the Transformers library, you can uh, uh, um, load and use uh, all the possible available, available models uh, based on the Transformer architecture, and also train and fine-tune these models on uh, all the possible uh, existing um, NLP tasks. Uh, so I load here this uh, BERT-based case model that is a pre-trained version of the BERT model. 
I choose here to select the number of labels equal to two because uh, uh, this is a sentiment classification task. So we simply have two labels, one for positive sentiment and zero for negative sentiment. And also you have, I have choose to put output attention to because uh, at the end of the presentation, we will see how to look at the attention matrices. So I need to extract the attention matrices of the model. Uh, I can uh, use a pre-trained model and fine tune this model, but also I, I, I can skip all the uh, fine tuning phase uh, and starting already from a, an already fine tuned model on that specific task. Uh, you will see that on the Hugging Face Transformer libraries, there's a lot of models already fine tuned on uh, different natural language processing tasks. Uh, so for instance, you can load a model already trained on this task uh, and then skip the fine tuning phase and move directly to the uh, interpretation phase of, of this tutorial. But let's start from a um, from a pre-trained model, so a model that was also only trained on the language modeling function. Well, the BERT model was trained on a uh, variation of the original language modeling function that it is called masked language modeling. So we start with this model, we load the model and the tokenizer in order to tokenize our, our data set. Uh, and then we need, of course, to load our data set. Uh, the data set is the SST2 data set that the, um, contains movie reviews uh labeled with sentiment so zero for negative sentiment and one for 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 positive uh, um for positive reviews okay so here i load the data set that is part for uh, it is part of the um, general language understanding uh, uh, understanding evaluation benchmark and and also yeah i printed the first rows of the data set in order to see the sentences and the labels associated to each input sequence uh, in the data set um, then, of course, the first step is to tokenize our data set. So here I created a tokenize function that tokenize our entire data set. And here I have uh, an error named tokenize is not defined because I didn't run this here. Okay, so first of all, I need to load the, um, the model and then, then the tokenizer. And then after loading the model the tokenizer, I can tokenize uh, the data set. I have decided to uh, set a maximum length uh, for our data set that is equal to 128. That means that all the sentences that are um, longer than 128 tokens will be truncated. And also, since this data set is quite big, uh, about uh, 60,000 sentences, I have decided here to uh, fine tune the model on a small subset of the data set. So, uh, 10,000 um, sentences for training and 1,000 sentences for, the, for for evaluation. But of course, you can comment this line and fine tune the model on the entire uh, SST2 dataset. Okay, so we load, uh, we 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 tokenized uh, our dataset, and uh, well, here it, it will uh, find, it will tokenize the dataset, and then of course we need to define the hyperparameters and the metrics uh, in order to uh, fine-tune our model. So here we have the um, hyperparameters, the output directory in which we will save our fine-tuned model. I have decided to train the model with one epochs, but of course, uh, if I will run the process for with two or three epochs, maybe we will have better results. Uh, of course, we need to train and evaluate our model. And I have choose here eight as a training batch size. But if you are fine tuning your model on GPUs, probably you will you will have the possibility to raise this this value to sixteen or or, or thirty two. And uh, since we are dealing with a very simple classification binary classification task, uh, we will use accuracy as uh, evaluation. And here I load the accuracy metric from the um, evaluate library, and here I create the function that compute the accuracy score starting from the predictions of, uh, of the model and the true corrected label associated uh, uh, to each um, input sequence in our data set. So we load our training arguments, and then we, we have uh, the, the last part of the fine tuning phase that is the fine tuning. Uh, we create this trainer object also from the again face library that takes as input of course our model 
uh, our training arguments. Of course, the training data set and the evaluation data set and the compute metrics function. And then we will uh, train the model with trainer uh, dot train. Um, I will not fine tune the model right now because the process is, is quite long and we will finish to fine tune the model at the end of the presentation. So this is the process of fine tuning the model. And also here you have the possibility to evaluate your model in order to understand uh, how good the model performed on, on our task. But uh, since I don't have time to, uh, I don't have time here to fine tune uh, the model. Let's go back to the uh, 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 to this part in which I load the model, and let's assume that we already fine tuned our model. So we fine tuned our model on the sentiment analysis uh, data set, and we obtained a fine tuned model. So let's assume that. Um, this uh, uh, birth base case fine tuned as SD2 is our fine tuned model. Okay. Uh, and we start from an already mod a model that was already fine tuned, so specified for our final classification task. Okay. So we fine tuned our model. And now I would like to fed the model with a, an input sequence, uh, a sentence from the SD2 dataset. I would like to uh, see if the model is able to correctly classify the sentiment of that sentence. But I would like also to understand if there are some words in that input sequence that pushes the model to a specific prediction, okay? So we start from the fine-tuned model. And first of all, we will see how to use this integrated gradients algorithm in order to uh, interpret its decision. Um, so I left here a lot of references in order to uh, understand more deeply how this algorithm works. I have here a tutorial. And also, if you are interested in understanding how uh, this algorithm works uh, more from a mathematical point of view, I also left here the um, link to the original paper in which this model was introduced for the first time. Uh, but um, in order to, to have a, a, an idea of how this algorithm works, I left here from the Captum documentation a brief description of the algorithm that says that the integrated gradients is a, a interpretability algorithm model that attributes or assigns an important score to each input feature in our input sequence by approximating the integral of, of, of the gradients of the model output with respect to the inputs along the path from a given uh, baseline. So uh, to be more precise, the algorithm works in three different steps. The first one is we start from our input sequence, our sentence, and then we create a baseline. If we uh, are working with images, uh, baseline can be seen as a black image. Since here we are dealing with uh, uh, language, with words, uh, uh, we can say that a baseline is a, a sentence without meaning and without any reference to the output label. So we can say that a, sent, uh, a baseline sentence is a sentence with the same length of our original input sequence, but only with uh, padding tokens, okay? So tokens that has no uh, meaning. So this is our baseline, okay? Then in the second step, we generate uh, uh, linear interpolations between the baseline and the original input sequence. And uh, we create these linear interpolations uh, with a specific number of steps. So one of the parameters that we need to define for, for the integrated gradients algorithm is the number of steps. At each of these steps, we, um, we start from our baseline. And we um, create this linear in interpolation in order to um, start to recreate our original input sequence, okay? And at each of this step, uh, we calculate the gradients in order to measure the relationship between changes to a feature, to an input feature, and changes in the model predictions. The core idea is that since we are not computing the prediction on the uh, complete input sequence, but on small modification, uh, starting from a meaningless baseline, uh, in the path dire directed to the original sequence, uh, we can somehow measure the impact of each input feature in our input sequence to the model prediction. So as I wrote here, 
the gradient informs which are the features or so the pixels or the tokens uh, that has the strongest effect on the prediction of our um of our, of our fine-tuned model okay so since we are dealing with a uh, binary classification task and we have two different target class uh, the integrated gradients method requires to set uh, a target class index so we will run this algorithm two times uh, one for the zero label so negative sentiment and one for positive sentiment the attribution is performed for each of this target class uh, and then this course will be uh, assigned uh, with regard to the outputs of the model for one of the two selected class okay so let's start with an example this is a, a sentence from the sentiment analysis data set uh, test set okay this is a review and also we know that this is a positive review in fact we have true label equal to one so the positive the, the sentiment of this uh, uh, of this sentence is is positive okay then we create some uh, helper functions and first of all we have this uh prepare input function in which we uh, create the input tensors of our input sequence so our original input sequence and then the input tensors for the baseline sequence so as you can see here we are creating this um, baseline sentence that, uh, that has the same length in terms of tokens of our original input sequence, uh, but only with uh, padding tokens. Then we also need to define a forward function in order to run inference of the model, and this function will be passed to the, uh, to the object that compute the attribution of the integrated gradients algorithm. I have also created here another predict function that we will use at the last part of this tutorial in order to extract also the attention matrices um, from, from the prediction of our model. And uh, so as you can see here, we have the linear integrated gradient attribute function that compute the attribution and that uh, this um, in this function, we will take as input our original input sequence, our baseline, some other additional forward arguments that can be used for the prediction and uh, as you can see here i have set the number of steps to run uh, this algorithm and then of course the target class so we will run this uh, function two times one time for the target class equal to zero so negative sentiment and one time equal to one so positive uh, sentiment okay so here we simply compute the attributions so first of all, we prepare the, the input. So we will create the uh, input tensors for our original input sequence and from for the, for the baseline. Then we create this layer integrated gradients uh, object that takes as input uh, our predict for function and um, uh, works with the word embeddings of our BERT model. So word embeddings uh, from the BERT model, okay? And then here we simply run the algorithm one time using a target class equal to zero and one other the other time using a target class equal to 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 one uh, i decided to print here the shape of the attributions in order to show you uh the, the dimensions of the uh computed attributions of of the algorithm at the end of the the process you will see the results but you will see that the we have um, a shape equal to uh, one we will have one sentence then uh, the number of tokens that we have in our input sequence and we will see 28 because our sentence is 28 tokens longer and then we will see that we have computed the attributions for each input uh, units in the embeddings of BERT. Um, the, the BERT model creates uh, an embeddings for each token in an input sequence equal to 768 units. So the integrated gradients algorithm compute an attribution for each specific unit of each uh, word embedding in an input sequence. Okay. So we we didn't not we 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 the algorithms didn't compute um an attribution for each specific uh, uh for each specific uh input token in in our nipu sequence but instead compute uh, um uh, attribution for each of the hidden units 
in the uh, embeddings of each heap award. So 768 attributions for each token of our input sequence, okay? Um, and then we computed, the, we run the algorithm, so we simply need to, to visualize our results. So here we have some visualization functions. Very briefly, we have this visualize attribution that uh, will help us to visualize the results. And as I said previously, since we computed the 768 uh, um, attributions for each input token, but in our case, we would like to see the importance of each input word in an input sequence. We need somehow to summarize these uh, attributions. So as you can see here, we have these summarized attributions in which we simply compute an average uh, attribution of each input token in an input sequence. So we compute an average across the um, embedding space, okay? In order to uh, obtain a average attribution score for each input token in our in our input sequence and finally here we simply uh, run the visualization and uh, here we have the results and in order to interpret the results uh, i have wrote here in, in 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 here how to understand the the colors in this uh, in this uh, in these um, sentences so the green tokens so positive uh, attribution scores uh, are the tokens that push the prediction to the, towards the target class while the red tokens so negative attribution scores are those that drives the score to the reference values so that means that um, the tokens that are perceived as positive will appear in green so positive attribution if the attribution algorithm was performed against class one, so positive sentiment, but will be highlighted in red when we uh, have computed the attribution, um, uh, attribution, uh, uh, the integrated gradients algorithm using target class equal to zero, okay? So as you can see here, uh, we can look at the second example. Uh, we have selected target class equal to one, so positive sentiment. Um, we know already that the true label of this specific input sequence is equal to one. We notice that the model predicted one, so in that case, uh, Bert correctly predicted the sentiment of this sentence. And as we can see here, green tokens means tokens that pushes the prediction to the uh, uh, true label that in this case is uh, one, so positive sentiment. So somehow we can say that uh, the words uh, reward, balance, and spectacular uh, are proxies for, for um, positive sentiment. And for some strange reason, the article here, this spectacular scale, uh, was seen uh, uh, from the integrated gradients algorithm as a proxy for, for negative sentiment. Of course, this is not an interpretable result because uh, um, there is no meaning in uh, in, uh, in seeing the article D as a proxy for negative sentiment. But the other three words, uh, reward, balance, and spectacular, can be seen somehow as proxy for sentiment, for positive sentiment in, in, in our NIPO sequence. Um, uh, on the other case, if we computed the algorithm using as a target class equal to zero, the red tokens will be the tokens that pushes the model to the prediction of the other class that in this case is uh, one. So again, uh, tokens uh, that um, somehow express the positive sentiment uh, in, our, in our input sequence, okay? So these are the, the, the results uh, only uh, for one input sequence. But um, for the last part of the presentation, I would like also to uh, use the attention matrices and see if there are some kind of relationship between the results that we can obtain visualizing attention matrices and the results obtained with the integrated gradients algorithm. So attention is the process, as I said previously, that allows the model to create the global dependencies in, uh, in our input sequence. And uh, here I left uh, very specifically the, the, the function that is computed when we are computing the attention uh of our, of each input uh, token in our input sequence but if you are interested in in understanding more specifically how attention works i left here the link of the original paper 
uh, in which the transformer model was introduced. So you can look at the, at the original paper. But in the last few years in the literature, the attention matrices has been also used for interpretability purposes and more specifically for understanding the, uh, which are the most attended tokens uh, by the model during the resolution of a specific task. Because uh, if we use attention to create uh, dependencies among the tokens in an input sequence, we can take our model, fine tune our model, ask the model to classify the sentiment of, of a specific input sequence, and then look at the attention matrices in order to see if there are some uh, words in our input sequence uh, that seems to be more important for, for our neural language model and then can be seen as a proxy for the correct uh, or incorrect classification on that specific uh, uh, input sequence, okay? So in the following, we will see how to visualize the attention matrices uh, uh, starting from our input sentence from the SST2 dataset. Uh, I didn't show to you, but here in the uh, visualize attributions um, function, I have computed the predictions of the model and I have extracted the, already extracted the attention matrices uh, of the prediction of the model. So I already have the attention matrices. And um, since uh, uh, we have already extracted the attention matrices, we didn't, we, we don't need to perform any other kind of computation in order to visualize the results. We simply need to visualize the attention matrices. Okay, so I have created here two different functions in order to visualize the attention scores for a given layer of our model. In, in our case, uh, the BERT model has 12 layers, okay? And for each layer, the model has 12 attention heads, so 12 attention matrices. So we can select one of the layer of the model and look at the attention matrices. This um, visualize token to token scores uh, will allow us to visualize uh, the token to token attention uh, for all the heads of a specific uh, layer of the BERT model. And then this visualize average attention per token uh, will allow us to visualize the average attention uh, for a specific token across all the 12 layers, all, all the 12 heads of, uh, of the model for a specific uh, selected uh, input layer, okay? So very briefly, we simply select one of the layer of the BERT model. And here I have decided to perform the computation uh, with the layer with index equal to zero. That is the first layer of the model. So the layer that it is more close to our input sequence. But of course we can uh, uh, look at the attention matrices uh, in uh, all the other layers of the model. And for instance, in the output layer of the model. And uh, if I run visualize token to token attention scores, we will obtain at the end of this process, 12 different matrices, as you can see here, 12 different matrices, one matrix for uh, each of the um, uh, attention head for that specific layer. Each matrix is a, an N by N matrix, where N is the number of tokens that we have in our input sequence, and how we can uh, um, interpret the resu these results. For instance, here we have at the uh, third head of the, of the model, we have this very small uh, yellow dot. Uh, that means that when the model was processing the word uh, Jack, uh, the model was also pushing a lot of attention on the word emotion. So there is a relationship between, between Jack and emotion when the model was pushing attention on the, um, on the word, when, when the model was processing the Jack token. And as we can see here, these uh, attention scores uh, are different across the 12 layers of, of, of the model. And uh, of course, they will change also if we compute the attention matrices on a different layer of the BERT model. And uh, in order to have a sort of comparison between these results and the ones that we obtain with the integrated gradients algorithm, here I have decided to visualize the average attention uh, across the uh, 12 heads. And, and also here, I will plot the uh, 
um, attribution scores computed uh, with target class equal to one because uh, uh, one is the positive sentiment and we already uh, noticed that the model was able to correctly classify the sentiment of that sentiment that was positive okay so uh, as you can see here here we have the average attention scores for uh, the attention matrices and here we have the um, average attribution scores of the integrated gradients algorithm these two um, plots are different but in general we can notice for instance that if we look at the average attention scores uh, for each token uh, the words uh, reward uh, spectacular and also balance uh, seems to be one of the, the most attended tokens uh, uh, in that specific input sequence, also with the word emotion. And if we look at the attribution scores on the integrated gradients algorithm, we can see that reward, balance, and spectacular seems to be important words for the correct prediction of uh, the sentiment of that specific input sequence. So it, it seems to be there's a sort of relationship between these two uh, approaches, even if uh, uh, here we notice that also emotion is an important word for predicting, well, not for predicting, but it is important in the uh, computation of the attention matrices of the model. While if we look at the uh, attribution computed with uh, towards, towards the word emotion with, it, with the integrated gradients algorithm, we will see here that uh, um, it seems that this word uh, is not very important for uh, uh, understanding the positive uh, sentiment of that center. So there is some kind of relationship between these two approaches, but also some other differences. And uh, um, of course, this is a, a very general overview of how we can use these two uh, techniques. Uh, also because there is a, a open debate on how we can use these um, techniques to interpret the decision of the models. There are some works that said that you can use attention for interpret the decision of the models. Other that uh, said that attention, it's not completely um, interpretable, but I, I, I uh, hope that you enjoyed this, uh, this tutorial and uh, starting from the experiment that I showed to you here, you can uh, perform more complex uh, um, investigation, maybe uh, not using only one input sequence, but trying to understand how attention scores and the attributions computed with the integrated gradients algorithm changes uh, using different input, se input sequences, different classification or regression or, or other kind of natural language processing tasks and, and so on. So just uh, one minute in order to go back here only for the, the, the last slide in which you have the, the links to for my website and the uh, my Twitter and the website and the Twitter of, uh, of uh, our lab. And here you have the references of the papers that I have uh, cited during the presentation and especially the uh, six, seven, eight works uh, that presented uh, different approaches uh, for uh, uh, performing interpretability on neural language models uh, with integrated gradients and with attention matrices, but also other uh, approaches uh, um, based on different uh, um, interpretability techniques, uh, such as uh, um, diagnostic tests uh, and probing tasks and, and, and so on. Uh, okay, so I think I have finished. And uh, if you have any questions or any doubts, uh, I am here. So, thank you so much for the introduction and in particular for the tutorial. The tutorial is highly appreciated. Um, what's quite interesting, I once used the captain uh, mm -hmm. in, together with Francesco, um, which is, um, um, you see, in, in a last year project with the, with the European Commission. Mm -hmm. to better understand uh, how some models were working uh, so thank you but i've never i've never used the uh, um, attention matrices mm -hmm. uh, uh, inter interpretation yeah. so far yeah. uh, by the way i think that uh, one of 
a couple of people in the audience, a couple of fellows that are working on a, a natural language processing can try this notebook on, a, on mm -hmm. some of our yeah. challenges. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank so you. if you if you have uh, any any question uh, for for Alessio, feel free to raise your hand or yeah. unmute your microphone, and uh, we have uh, few uh, ten minutes and more to to, to, to talk about. I have a question. Uh, yeah. I was I was trying to understand uh, why the word uh, the the stop word the try to be a negative uh, push for the this thing uh, yeah. but, um, is is it because uh, of the fact that uh, transformers are used for longer sequences for longer sequences <laughs> yeah uh, uh, as i mentioned like uh, yeah uh, transformers are trained on uh, i mean uh, that's the advantage uh, transformers have right uh, on uh, for training on a longer sequence and to understand the context on a longer sequence is that the reason why uh, the word the is uh, being pushed uh, or to be like uh, positive on the uh, attribution score um well i, I don't know if it is uh, uh one of the possible explanation is why, uh, because the model are trained on longer sequences, because yes, the model are trained on more longer sequences, but the sequence uh, deals with the entire input sequence. Here we are dealing with uh, a, a, I don't know if it can be explained in, in this direction. Uh, one thing I, I, I noticed also performing these experiments on, uh, on other input sequences of the SST2 dataset is somehow the prediction are highly interpretable. We have words that uh, uh, we can say that, yes, these words are positive words, and it seems that the model uses these words to push this prediction to the positive or to the negative class. And in other cases, it, 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 it is not highly uh, interpretable. Maybe in that case, well, also we have the words the here okay so here and here but it seems that uh, when we use uh, the the in on the human scale the model pushes not attention not in, um, importance on that word while uh, here uh, the spectacular case uh, somehow this the uh, became uh, negative for the prediction of the model but i i, I I'm not sure how to interpret this result. We can maybe look at the attention matrices and understand if the model pushes attention to this word that it is uh, here. And as we can see here, the article D seems to be not very uh, a, a highly attended tokens. Um, also because um, when we uh, interpret the decision of the model with the, the attention matrices, we are, we are not only dealing with the uh, uh, lexical point of view and the output prediction of the model, but also on the syntactic structure of the model, because a token is computed uh, against all the other tokens. So we are also uh, looking at the attention matrices. We are looking also at the relationship in a syntactic way from uh, 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 along the words in an input sequence. And we, as we can see here that the non-content word, such as A, or D or on seems to be not very important. So maybe in that case, uh, we cannot uh, rely a lot on the results of the integrated gradients algorithm, but we can somehow, uh, I will say sort of uh, explaining the explanation. So we can uh, use the uh, results on the attention matrices to see if the uh, results obtained with the integrated gradients algorithm are somehow reliable, maybe. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Alessio. Thank you for the nice hello. presentation and uh, Thank you. tutorial. My name is Evgeny. Uh, actually, I have a question, but uh, it's not related to interpretability, however, okay. to NLP. So I'm mm -hmm. going to take this opportunity to ask you as you're working in this field. Okay. Um, so nowadays, the graph neural networks are becoming quite popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we can uh, see that transform itself is kind of graph. 
I lost. I lost you. Yes, uh, I also lost the. Uh, okay. Okay, maybe if, if the microphone is not working, you can write your question in the chat and I will uh, answer looking at the, at the question in the chat. Yes, maybe we can go on with Pinku. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, hi, Alistair. Uh, first of all, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so the language model was trained on mass data set. So it was not very yes. pre-processed, like uh, the articles were not removed and all that. So it was just plain normal English text. So mm -hmm. if I use uh, my input to be like highly processed, like I remove all the does and is uh, from my input, in that case, the model won't perform pretty well because the uh, the training, uh, the pre-training data was not pre-processed. So, is that uh, uh, conclusion correct? Uh, when the pre-training data was not pre-processed, uh, what you tell with with pre-processing in this case? Uh, like uh, whether does or is are not removed, right? Well, sorry, like that, the I highly, uh, like the yeah, highly frequent words, for example, does like articles, uh, they are not removed from the like the training data for the language model, right? So, in that case, if I remove the articles, then it won't help, right? Yeah, in general, when you find when you fine tune, but also when you train a pre-trained model, you 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 didn't you not you didn't perform any kind of. Uh, uh removals this was mainly done with previous models because when uh, uh, in previous systems based for instance on support vector machine and so on the core idea was to extract important features in order to perform prediction on other tasks and so the core idea was okay let's start from an input sequence and then removes the words that are not important in that input sequence and use only the content words or the words that can help us to extract features for the prediction of the model um, when we deal with the uh, highly uh, parameterized neural language models the pre-training phase is simply um uh, is simply uh use uh, um, a, a training data set for instance old wikipedia and, uh, and not performing any kind of pre-processing on uh, on uh, that input sequence so also articles uh, and other uh, not content word are used in the training phase of, of the model of course uh, the only uh, pre-processing phase is the tokenization and it has been important to notice that i have talked about tokens in this presentation but uh, uh, it is not uh, correct because uh, the tokenization with this model is performed with a tokenization algorithm that is called word piece tokenization so the tokens are split in small pieces of uh, of tokens so in that case you can see that we have two tokens we the word is rewarding uh, but the model divided this uh, word in two different pieces, so reward and ing. So this is the only um, pre-processing phase that we have, but in general, also the uh, non-content word, articles, um, uh, punctuation marks, etc., et are used in the training phase of, of the model. Oh, okay, okay. and I was, okay, so, uh, He's asking how the model will perform if we remo if we remove a stop word. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, how the model will perform if we remove stop words? Uh, maybe we will have a difference in the result. But again, it is important to notice that the BERT model is a pre-trained model. So if we pre-train the model with stop words and then in fine tuning we remove the stop words. Uh, we are not helping the model. If we would like to see the impact of uh, having or not having the input words uh, in um, in uh, in uh, in the model, it could be uh, possible to understand the behavior when fine tuning the model. But it would be also interesting to train the model with uh, uh, from from the beginning without um, without stop words and see if 
uh, this uh, process will help also the model during a uh, fine-tuning phase. So the, the, the other uh, question is, I uh, was wondering whether the integrated gradients algorithm can be scaled up to sentence paragraph level. Uh, here it works at token level. Is there that kind of work already done? Um, uh, uh, uh. Okay, so I, I, I didn't find uh, any works uh, using the algorithm on, uh, from a sentence or, or document level. One very simple approach uh, could be like if my input sequence is not one sentence, but more than one uh, sentence, so one, two, three, four, five sentences, uh, we can somehow compute a sort of uh, uh, summarization, as I already did here, in order to obtain a sort of average attribution scores, uh, not for a single input token, but for instance, for an input sequence, uh, for a sentence in a document or a sentence in a paragraph. But I don't know if this process will uh, produce any interpretable uh, um, results. And this is, 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 is uh, also uh, valid for the interpretation uh, with uh, um, attention matrices. Uh, all the experiments uh, and the studies are mainly focused on tokens and pairs of tokens, so relationship between tokens. Um, I, I, at the moment, I don't have in mind any works that uses the visualization and the interpretation of attention matrices from uh, document or, or uh, 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 paragraph uh, point of view. Okay, so yes, I got the nature of connection. Could you please repeat what do you think about the graphing neural network applied for entity extraction? Uh, unfortunately, I uh, know that nowadays uh, uh, also graphing neural networks uh, are used in the context of NLP, but I, I, I didn't have time, I didn't uh, have time to, to study more in depth how these uh, models uh, are used. So I, I'm not the, 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 the the, the best person to answer your question. Um, there are some works that uses graph neural networks for entity extraction and um, other kind of tasks, but uh, I, I, I never work with them. So I, I cannot answer uh, precisely to your question. It, it, it's okay, thanks Alessia. And <laughs> what, what do you think about uh, for example, there are some documents uh, like uh, that coming from o OCR, uh, like bank statements, where we have we should look at uh, some pieces of a document, like mm -hmm. uh, one paragraph and ignore the others. And uh, with transformers, you basically look at everything. Yes. What yes. What do you think if we try to modify some attention mechanism in the way that we will look only at localized area? In localized area in a document. Uh, yeah, yes. How, how much it yes. makes sense to you? So uh, that we kind of do not propagate a lot some extra mm -hmm. information that's not related to. There are some works uh, that tried to modify uh, the attentions, matrices, uh, the attention values in order to push the model uh, to look uh, maybe some part of a documents but for instance in some part in an input sequence uh, um, I, I don't remember this works uh, very specifically but um, there are some works that uh, also in interpretability try to understand uh, um, if there are some parts in an input sequence that can push the prediction of the model to the correct class uh, and maybe try to understand if we can uh, like um, 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 how can I say it to to force the model to look at specific uh -huh. part in the input sequence in order to correctly predict uh, the, the, the class. Uh, this is also done uh, in the context of very linguistic tasks. For instance, I have a sentence, I have a sentence that has uh, some kind of error, and we are dealing with uh, a task that could be like um, ac acceptability, that is the grammatical acceptability of a sentence. Maybe if we find a way to push the model to look at the part in the input sequence that uh, has a specific error of, or deviation from the norms, uh, this will help the model to, 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 to improve uh, um, its results. And uh, this uh, um, previously, 
was done modifying the, the structure, the architecture of the model. Nowadays, uh, uh, a lot of people are working on prompting. That is the core idea of modifying mm -hmm. an input sequence uh, and uh, continue fine tuning the model uh, with the original language modeling function and modifying all the fine tuning tasks uh, using this uh, prompting function and one possible idea is it, it could be not modifying the architecture but forcing in the prompt uh, to um, force the model to look a specific part in the input sequence for instance i have a positive uh, review i have the review then i can write uh, um, this review uh, speaks uh, in, a, in a specific way of the actors of or the screenplay of the review therefore the sentiment of this uh, review is positive and maybe this process uh, can help the model to to go to the correct prediction thanks sir very useful okay thank you okay. thank you very much of course uh, thank you very much alessia and also for uh, all the questions um, thank you before closing, so really, uh, what's really interesting, um, also the notebook. And before closing, just uh, just um, one thing from uh, from our side, uh, from high school. Um, mm -hmm. Yesterday, no, it's not related to, to the talk. It's general mm -hmm. general news. Uh, yesterday, uh, we, we shared um, this. Uh, I will share with you uh, this new uh, call for uh, fellows for for the future for next session. Uh, because we were able to, um, we, we will be able to start uh, uh, in, um, in November, December, a new challenge related to health observation. Uh, by the way, we are, um, so we are searching new fellows. Um, by the way, we, uh, those fellows um, would be appreciated that they have some skills in health observation and also graph neural networks, because the challenge will be related to also maybe to graph neural networks applied to uh, satellite uh, data so if you know somebody mm -hmm. okay. that's interested in a heart observation I'm talking to everybody feel free to share to share uh, this uh, this call for for next session thank you uh, so uh, that was uh, also the, the news um, so thank you again Alessio was really helpful thank you I hope to invite you maybe in the future uh, yeah. again. And yes. um, we'll stop. Thank you to everybody. Okay, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Great bye. Talk. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.